What's going on guys? John Alder here from tkinter.com and in this video, we're going to create an image to PDF file converter with Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to create this image to PDF file converter. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab a totally free PDF copy of my Kinter widget quick reference guide book. This thing is awesome. It has all the attributes for all the Kinter widgets and the TTK widgets. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book, enter your email address and get a free PDF copy. And while you're there, check out membership in tkinter.com and get all my courses, videos, and books for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership. Check that out if you're interested. So this is the thing we're going to create. We can click a button to open an image and open any image that we want. And then we want to save to PDF. I'm going to save this as, I don't know, Aspen one a PDF. We go ahead and save it. It's done. We can open up a file explorer. See, there's the PDF file. When we open it, the image has been saved as a PDF file. And there's all different ways you can configure this. You can change the position of the image on the PDF file. You can resize the image, move it around. We'll talk about all that in this video. So let's head over our code. I'm using the sublime text editor and the get batch terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Kinter videos in the series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a file I'm calling it image underscore PDF dot pi. It's our basic Kinter starter code that we always have. And before we get started, we need to pip install a little library that will take care of all the heavy lifting for us. So let's head over to our terminal and you can see I'm in my C slash tkinter.com directory and we just want to pip install F PDF. And I've already got this. So it's going to be like, Hey, you've already got it. Uh, but if you don't, it will go ahead and install while you're at it. You need to pip install pillow. We're going to using the Python image library pill or pillow. I've already got it. So we're good to go there. So, all right, let's head back over to our code now. We've installed those things. Now we need to sort of import them. So let's up at the top here. Let's go from F PDF. We want to import capital F PDF, all capital, right? We also want to from pill import image and image TK. Now notice the T is capitalized. The K is lowercase. Sometimes people mess that up. So while we're at it, we also want to from tkinter import file dialog. So this will be the file dialog box that pops up that allows us to open our files and save our files and all that good stuff. So okay, let's come down here and create our GUI. What we're going to need here is a label to add the image to the screen. We don't have to do that, but it makes it nice to see that we've got an actual image that we're working with. Uh, so we're going to use the label for that. And we need a couple of buttons, one to open the file, one to save the file. So I'm going to call this my underscore label. And this is going to be a label. We want to put it in root. We want the text for now to say something like, open image or something like that. And for now, let's give it a font of Helvetica and a size of like 28. And then let's minus score label dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of like 50 to really push it down the screen. So now we need a couple of buttons. I'm going to call one the open button. And it's going to be a button. We want to put it in root. We want the text to say something like open image. And we want to give this a command of open or <laughs> no, we don't have that opener function yet, but we'll create that in just a minute. And let's open underscore button dot pack this guy. And let's give this a pad Y of like 10 to push it down just a little bit. Now we also want a save button. And this is going to be a button. We want to put it in root. We want the text to say something like save to PDF, something like that. And we want to give this guy a command of let's call this saver. And then let's save underscore button dot pack put that on the screen. So we've got our GUI set up. Let's rough in really quickly these functions. So we can define opener and we can define saver. And we'll just pass both of these for now. So let's go ahead and save this and rent just to make sure this is looking okay. I'm sure it will. We want Python image underscore PDF dot pi. And when we do, we get this basic outlook. Looks pretty good. Buttons don't do anything. Label doesn't do anything, but okay, we've got our GUI set up. So now we need to work on our opener. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple of global variables. One is going to be get underscore image and the other one will be, let's call the other one image underscore path. And the reason why we have to make these global is because when you're working with functions in Kinter with images, you have to make them global or they won't work. Kinter has a garbage collection system that will just sort of sweep away all your images unless they're global just the way it is. I know that makes a lot of people very angry. Why do we have to use global variables? I don't understand why they're so upset about that. It's just what we have to do. So, okay. So 
let's create a variable called input underscore path. And I'm going to give this a little comment that says uh, open file dialog box. And so let's open a file dialog. So we want file dialog dot ask open file name, right? So we're going to say, hey, what file name do we want to open? And let's give this guy a little title that says open image. And then down here, we want to open an image of a file type of put a couple of these guys in PNG. And that's going to be a file extension dot PNG. And for good measure, let's open all files as well. We don't really want this, but I always do this because it just sort of makes it look nicer. And we want star dot star. That means open all files. And so that looks good. Okay, so we've got this file path. Now, let's save this globally because we're going to want to access this label later on. So let's set let's comment set file path global to use it later, right? So let's go image underscore path equals input path, right? And that's this image path here. So we're going to want to grab this later on. So let's just go ahead and do that. So Okay, so now we've got the thing. Let's open this image and put it on the screen just so we can see what we're dealing with. So let's go if input underscore path. And then another one, let's go if, and I'm using the same code we did in our QR code video a couple of videos ago, just to make sure that the file extensions are correct here. So let's go if input path dot ends with dot PNG. Then we want to do something. Oops. There we go. Else we want to do something else. So if it doesn't end in, in, in PNG, we want to make it end in PNG. So let's go input underscore path equals, and let's create an F string. And inside of here, let's put our input path. And then let's slap a dot PNG to the end of it. Okay. And let's comment add PNG to end of path. Okay, so moving right along, we want to open the image file that we just selected and put it on the screen. So let's get underscore image, and that's going to be an image tk dot photo image. And what image do we want to open? We want to image dot open that input underscore path. Okay, so let's get image. And here let's add image to label. So that's just my underscore label dot config. And we want to set the image to get underscore image. So we want to do this same exact thing down here. So I'll just copy and paste that. And we're good to go. So let's go ahead and save this around and make sure that's working. Let's head back over to our terminal Python image underscore PDF. And let's open an image Aspen, boom, it pops on the screen. All right, we're good to go. So we've selected our image, we've opened it, we've added it to our little app here. We don't strictly need to do this, but it's just nice to see the image that we've picked before we put it into a PDF. So now all that's left to do is to add it to the PDF. So super simple, let's come down here. And in our saver function, we're going to do the same thing, we're going to open a file dialog. So let's open file dialog to save PDF. And let me come up here and just kind of copy this guy. And let's come down here and paste. Now instead of ask open file name, this is going to be ask save as file name. And instead of open image, let's have the title say save PDF. And of course, this is not a PNG file, we want this to be a PDF file. So we'll change that to PDF. Okay, that looks good. Now let's say if input underscore path. So the reason why we do this is sometimes people will open a file dialog box and then they'll click cancel. They won't save it as a file name or they won't click on a file name or whatever. If that happens, we don't want the program to continue on. We want it to stop. So we want to make sure they, they typed in a file name. So that's what this if statement will do. We're saying, hey, if there is a file name, then go on. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say if input path dot ends with dot PDF, I want to make sure that we've saved it as a PDF file. Or sometimes if say I wanted to save the file as aspen.pdf, 
some people will just type in Aspen and hit enter, right? They don't type in aspen.pdf and we need it to say .pdf. So we're gonna do a little logic to make sure if they didn't type .pdf, we're gonna put it in there ourselves. So we could do that by same thing as we did up earlier, just by going input underscore path equals, and then creating a little F string and saying input underscore path, and then slapping a dot PDF. Say add PDF file extension. Okay, so that's all good. Now we need to actually do the saving to the PDF. So first we need to create a, an F PDF instance. So create F PDF instance. And I'm gonna call this PDF, and this is just gonna be an F PDF instance. And it's F PDF because way up here at the top here, we imported it as F PDF, all capital, right? So, okay, there we go. Now let's create a PDF page. And to do that, we go PDF dot add underscore page. And it's PDF right here because we named it PDF right there, right? Makes sense? So we've created a page. Now let's add image to page. So let's go pdf.image and we wanna paste in this image path that we created up here. Remember we made this global so we can access it down here. So we just pop that right in there. Now this takes several arguments. We'll look at those in a minute. Basically they're X, Y, and width and height. But if you leave all of those blank, they'll just take the default of whatever the image is and slap it in the top left corner, right? X and Y are coordinates on the page. So X and Y and width and height are the width and the height of the image, right? We just want the default width and the height of the image. So we're gonna leave those blank, right? So we'll just leave it like that. We'll go back and play with those a little bit later, but for now, we'll just leave it as it is. So finally now let's save PDF. And to do that, we just pdf.output, and then we wanna save it as input underscore path. Why input path? Because up here, we chose what we wanted to save it as. So that will say, hey, save it as whatever we put in the file dialog box. And then we wanna give this an F flag, right? Okay, that's it. So let's also update our label, just so we kinda of know it's done, right? So let's go my underscore label dot config, and let's set the image to nothing because remember there was an image there. And instead let's set the text equal to done or something like that. Okay, so that looks good. We can now just copy all of this and kind of bring it down to our else statement and add it there. Okay, looks good. Let's go ahead and save this and run it, see if that worked. So let's open our image, let's pick this guy, let's save it to PDF. I'm gonna call this Aspen2. Go ahead and save it. Boom, it says done. All right, we should be good to go. Go ahead and close this. And now if we come over to our file dialog box, we see Aspen 2. If we open it, there it is. Very cool. Now you'll notice it's right up here in the top left corner and it's the default size. Like I said, we can play around with that if we want. So let's play around with that now just to see. And we do that by coming up here and in our image path, we can set, like I said, X equal to something, I don't know, let's say over 50. Let's say Y equals down 50. And let's set the width equal to 50 and the height equal to 50. So it's gonna take it from this size to like this size, and it's gonna move it from the top left sort of down middle-ish, right? And now we need to do the same thing down here in our else statement. Okay, go ahead and save that. Let's head back over here, give this guy a try. So open image, Aspen, save to PDF. I'm gonna call this just Aspen three. Boom, done. Let's head back over here, open this, open Aspen three. And you can see it's moved it down over 50, down 50, and it's resized it. You'll notice the aspect ratio is wrong here because we're not changing the aspect ratio. We just said override it to 50 by 50, and that's gonna distort it. So. You can keep your aspect ratios in the correct ratio if you want to not distort your image. I'll leave all that up to you. Uh, this video is getting a little bit long and we can tinker with this for hours, but uh, yeah, pretty easy. Now, you might want to, in your code, 
add some entry boxes so you could select exactly where you want your X, Y, W, and H's to be. I'll leave that to you. It's pretty trivial, uh, but yeah, just do it like that. I'm going to go ahead and take this off because I don't want to change those things, but just sort of keep in mind that's how you would do it if you want to. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab your totally free PDF version of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book, enter your email address, and I'll shoot that right out to you, and it should be cool. So my name is John Elder from tkinter.com, and I'll see you in the next video.